I have the luckiest job in the world as the director of self-publishing and author relations at Kobo. Not only do I head up an incredible world-class team of Kobo Writing Life professionals, but I'm also a hybrid author. I uh, indie publish and I also work with a traditional publisher. Like I try to tell most authors, I embrace the best of both worlds. Publishing has never been more dynamic, more exciting, and there have never been more opportunities for writers than ever in the history of publishing. And me and the wonderful team at Kobo Writing Life are happy to champion writers into this brave new and exciting world of publishing. As an independent author, I get to benefit from that myself. And as an author that does work with a publisher, I get to benefit from it as well. And I get to see a lift in my sales on both ends of the spectrum, depending on the different promotions that I work at as an author. So hi, I'm Mark Dawson. I'm the author of the John Milton, Beatrix Rose and Soho Noir books. Uh, the series I'm best known for is, is Milton and the elevator pitch for that would be what would James Bond be like if he was an alcoholic who'd left MI6. So when I say that to people, most people correct me and say, Mark, James Bond is an alcoholic, which is of course true. I've published eight novels in that series and two novellas with a ninth coming uh, next month towards the end of May. Milton is inspired by the 1980s TV show The Equalizer starring Edward Woodward and that enables me to take him and drop him into various situations around the world where he tries to atone for his previous sins by helping other people um, and the new book is set in Syria and Italy and London and they've all been completely uh, great fun to write, um, had over a million downloads of the series and have enabled me to uh, leave my job and, and make a full time out of writing. People ask me for advice quite a lot. A lot of new authors come up to me and ask me what they should do to enable them to get a good foundation for a successful self-publishing career. And I would say there are a couple of things that need to be done straight away. The, the most important thing is to get an email list. Immediately build a list where your readers can tell you that they like your books, leave you their email addresses so that you can then contact them. And a really good way to find new readers is by using Facebook ads. That's the thing that I'm probably best known for in the author community. Um, I've got a podcast and a website at selfpublishingformula.com where we look at marketing tips with a focus on Facebook advertising. When it comes to foreign rights, it's a bit more tricky because I don't speak any other languages apart from a bit of French. Um, my agent has um, sold those rights to traditional publishers in Germany, Italy, Czech Republic, and there's more coming on tap. And that just takes all of that pressure off me. I'm prepared to sell those, those language right, rights, those distinct rights to the publishers, let them translate it, and then let them market them for me. I have about 80 books uh, in four languages. I write in English, even though my mother tongue is German. Uh, I also translate into German, but I have a team who translates into French and into Spanish. And actually also Kobo is doing a translation deal with me as well, and they translate books for me into French as well, and then market it on the French and on the Canadian market. I write mostly paranormal romance. Uh, I also write a little bit of contemporary, but I, I concentrate mostly on paranormal romance. And I have various different series. I have a few vampire series. I have a series with immortal guardians and demons. Uh, and it's a lot of fun to write. It's, uh, it's a really exciting, uh, exciting job, and I'm glad I'm, I get to do it. Since I'm self-published, uh, I'm basically my own publisher, so I do everything. I'm a little publishing house myself, so I have to really divide my time between writing and between all the business stuff, the marketing, the formatting, the proofreading, getting the covers together. There are so many different things that you have to think of as a self-publisher and nobody can really take those decisions from you. So you really have to try as a self-publisher to divide your time into what is your creative time and what is your business time and make sure that you don't shortchange either of those because if you can't produce the books, you can't do your writing, then uh, the business part doesn't help you much. 
So as a self-publisher, you have to be very disciplined. You have to set time aside, specific times for the writing, specific times for all your business, all your marketing. There, is, there are so many aspects to it. And I can't say that there is one part that I like most. I think my husband always says, if I were with a publishing company and would just write the books and not do anything else, not do any marketing, not do any business, uh, I would probably be bored. And I think he is right. I like all aspects of the publishing. I love the writing and the creative side, but I also like all the business, the wheeling and dealing, the marketing, the getting in touch with, with the readers. Uh, all those, those things are part of my business and it's what makes it fun. I'm in touch with my readers all the time through social media, emails, anything. Also if I go to, re uh, to readings or to signings, to conferences. So I get a lot of feedback from readers of what they want to see in my books, what they particularly like, what series they, they like most, what they don't like as much. And that really helps me also sort of home in on what I should write next, what character is next in line for my books, especially since I write long-standing series. So it's always important to see what character really um, has a good connection with my readers. And therefore, if I write something about that character, the readers will really appreciate that and they'll go and buy that book and they really, really be happy about it. So it's really important for me to know from my readers what they like, because then I can go into that direction. And I think as a self-publisher, you really do have that chance to have that direct contact with your readers, which I think uh, other authors probably don't have as much. So I'm very grateful for that, that, that we have all those channels where readers can get in touch with you and where you can communicate with them. So we're here at the London Book Fair at Author HQ and today we're talking about the business of being an author. So everyone needs to write but you also need to think about the publishing and marketing side of being a writer. So it's not just about getting the words on the page, it's also about getting the book out to the reader. And that can be fun as well, so that's what we're talking about today. My biggest tip for writing is to remember that the first draft is not the finished product. Because so many writers get a head up about getting a perfect sentence from their head onto the page, but actually that's not how a book is made. So when you're doing the first draft, just concentrate on getting the words down, getting black on white, and then you can edit them later and then that will make the finished product. So my next book is Destroyer of Worlds in the arcane action-adventure thriller series, which is described as Lara Croft meets Dan Brown. So it's a very sort of high action impact thriller. And this time it's set in India. So there's an ancient secret uh, that Dr. Morgan Sierra and the arcane team have to hunt down before it destroys India. So super exciting and a lot of fun. And that's out 21st of April, 2016. What's different maybe for me compared to a lot of authors is that I write across genre, not just across genre, I write across fiction and non-fiction and I write poetry as well. So that creates challenges and that is one of the reasons that I absolutely love self-publishing because you can actually talk to different categories of readers in a way that, that you couldn't otherwise. At the moment I'm writing a big trilogy about W.B. Yeats and Maud Gaughan. He is an Irish poet and he's Muse who was an Irish revolutionary and that's an incredible story because he also proposed marriage to her daughter, he, having made a poetic career out of his love for her. So I'm really enjoying that. And then at the non-fiction level I'm doing a series of books that are about applying the creative process to life. There may have been a time where you could kind of game the system as a self-publisher and, you know, do a trick, a, a strategy, but that's gone. What it comes back to now is very much what it has always been. It's about the relationship between two imaginations, that private space where a writer's imagination meets a reader's imagination and fuses something new. So as authors, we need to understand our reader, whoever that reader is, and we need to know what is it that brings their imagination alive. And we need to work with that, not only in our books, but also in our marketing. 
So today is actually the fourth birthday of Ally. We were born here at London Book Fair four years ago and that's super exciting. And we now have, um, I suppose what's different now to then is that self-publishing has come to be seen as central to the industry. What hasn't changed since the beginning and now and will continue forever is that everybody who wants to self-publish is welcome in the Alliance, whether it's just an idea and you're just preparing the book or whether you've sold millions and you're working out how to sell your next million, everyone is welcome. The first thing I did for book marketing when I uh, launched my debut novel, Invasion of Privacy, uh, 18 months ago was to also quickly write a prequel, uh, a novella called Social Engineer and more to introduce the character and this novella uh, I priced for free and the idea obviously was to have a uh, something that people could try for nothing, try out a, a new author and if they like it obviously they'd go on to, the, um, to, the, to buy the, the, the debut novel um, and that's worked really really well. The big thing I've focused on, certainly in the last um, six months, um, was to focus on my mailing list. That's the biggest thing I've done now. My mailing list is now in the 5,000, 10,000, it'll be soon. Um, and I'm doing that through a combination of drawing people in through Twitter, through my website. The last technique that I've been using far more recently is Facebook advertising. But to make all that work, I had to make some really tough decisions. And one of those was I had to look at my book's cover um, because I could tell from the uh, conversions that they weren't really selling the book well enough to the broadest possible audience. And in the end, I took the tough decision to have the, uh, the covers, which I loved, redesigned um, to present my books as far more contemporary modern thrillers. You know, lots of experience built up and uh, grown over the last 18 months and all of it will come to uh, one big crescendo when I launch the, uh, the third book in my thriller series uh, later this year um, and uh, the mailing list will be there, the advertising will be there and Twitter will be there to make sure that I can uh, really, really get the word out and launch with a big splash and hopefully hit the, uh, the bestseller, bestseller charts on Kobo.